everybody and welcome to the city of Cuenca located in the south of Ecuador. We've got five days here so we're going to be exploring all around the city and also taking a few day trips outside of the city and what better place to start as usual than right down there in the historic center. Starting here in the central square, which is called Parque Calderon. It's surrounded by really impressive buildings, really colourful buildings. Yeah. But definitely the most impressive is just in front of us here, which is the new cathedral. You can also climb up to the towers, which should make for a pretty impressive view over the city, I think. Although there's a lot of steps to take to get up there first. <laughs> Whilst the views are impressive, the highlight of going up to the roof of the cathedral has to be seeing the distinctive blue domes up close. trying this ice cream called espadilla or something like that. It's basically like ice cream but it doesn't melt. They have it out all day and we were wondering what it was at first because we were like how does that not melt because it looks just like ice cream but actually it's like a different mix of ingredients. It tastes like a very thick whipped cream, like a very thick one. It's really nice, very sweet though. <laughs> You're right, it's like really thick whipped cream. You have it cream. all over your lip. This reminds me of a European street, Yay. like Rome or something. Right next to the new cathedral is this super colourful flower market, which is no surprise as Ecuador is apparently the third largest exporter of flowers in the world. Come just south of the city centre now, down to the Rio Tomebamba. This river runs all the way along the city, and there's a really nice walkway that goes all the way along it. It's nice to be in some sort of greenery with yeah. the river. But we're hoping that this is going to take us all the way down to some ancient Inca ruins that are right here in the city centre. These ruins are actually free to enter, which is great, and they're called Humapungo. And it's believed to have been like the administrative and religious center of the ancient Inca city called Tumebamba. And it was actually believed to have been destroyed in the Inca Civil War just before the Spanish arrived. And then the Spanish actually used most of the remaining stones to build the city of Cuenca. All that's really left is the foundations. So whilst it's not the most impressive Inca ruin that we've been to on this trip, it is pretty cool that Tumebamba is considered one of the possible locations of El Dorado. In that sense, it's pretty cool to be standing in what is potentially the lost city of gold, according to the Spanish. It actually reminds me of uh, the pyramids in Lima. You know, that was in the kind of like mm -hmm. center of the city. You have a really nice view of the area. It's pretty, pretty sick. Final stop of the day is up here at the Mirador de Turi, which as you can see gives you some amazing views out over the city. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. And there's also an adventure park as well if you want to go on a swing or like other fancy things. You can get up here by taxi or by walking, but either way you do it, you'll be rewarded with this incredible view.
So that does it for our time in the historic centre of Cuenca. We'd heard a lot of good things about Cuenca and it's definitely a prettier city than Quito. We didn't like the main plaza because it was nice and green, the yeah. church was really beautiful and then the viewpoints obviously when you have an overview of the city it's always beautiful. It's definitely got charm and it's got more charm than Quito. Yeah. Obviously the historic centre is not the only thing you can do here and tomorrow we are heading out to Cajas National Park which is one of the best day trips you can do here from Cuenca. So we're really looking forward to that and getting back out into nature. Good morning guys! Good morning and welcome to Cajas National Park. We're about 40 kilometers just northwest of Cuenca right now and this national park is a massive protected area so obviously we had to check it out. It's giving us some serious Scotland vibes. Yes, I mean look at this place. Once you arrive to the ranger station you'll see some maps of like loads of different routes you can take on. There's loads of trails around here. We've opted for a fairly short one today, probably about five kilometers. We are at about 4,000 meters of altitude here so we don't want to stress do ourselves <laughs> out too much. From what I've heard the trail are really well marked so hopefully it'll be nice and easy to navigate. Ranger helped us out with some really useful information about the different trails. There's about 11 or 12, I think. There was quite a lot. Differing lengths. And we decided to do Route 1, which I think is probably one of the more popular routes to do around the park. It's about a five kilometer loop. Kind of get to see a little bit of everything, some views, some forests, some lakes. We definitely advise getting here early. I mean, we were like the first ones here. We got the seven o'clock bus from Cuenca. There was a couple of signs around saying they limited the number of visitors each day. One said that it was limiting to like 92 visitors a day. Day. One sign said about almost 200 visitors. We're not sure what that relates to, whether that's the whole park, different routes, but either way, best to get here early or come on a weekday. We're here on a Friday and like I said, we were the first ones here. So we've come around the lake, probably about a kilometre in, and we're just coming to the first of the forests in front of us. These are the really cool sort of paper trees. They have this really cool bark that sort of just peels off like paper, which is pretty cool. Apparently they're some of the highest growing trees in the world, around 4,000 metres here, and this is probably one of the highest forests anywhere in the world. Yeah, they're pretty cool trees. Pretty cool to look at too, very gnarly. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Out of the forest. Am I ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Whoa. Well, that just highlights what we're about to highlight. Number one advice if you come and to do any of these trails to bring the right pair of shoes because the trail likely to be muddy i mean there are some sections that are well maintained for the most part it's quite rocky and muddy and slippery so you really want shoes with good grip plus kind of waterproof and mud proof <laughs> these are my shoes currently sometimes the mud is deeper than you think i always step in it <laughs> Trails are marked with these kind of posts with a colour on. All of the trails are like colour coded. Do you know which one you're following? It's very hard to get lost. If you wanted to download offline maps, that's fine, but it's really not that necessary. It's really, really simple to follow the trail. Can't really go wrong.
After a quick stop for lunch with an amazing view, we continued to follow the path back to the ranger station. Very slow today. I think after just having a lunch and then climbing uphill, it's not the best. After about another 30 minutes of hiking, we made it back to the station, made our way to the bus stop just across from the entrance, and hopped on a bus to take us back to Cuenca. Cajas National Park is a seriously beautiful and wild place, and one that is so easy to get to from Cuenca. If you want to escape the hustle and bustle of Cuenca for a day and reconnect with nature, then this is the place to do it. So today we've come just outside of Cuenca, well basically in Cuenca, we're just on the hills <laughs> surrounding it. We've come to Amaru Biopark, which is not quite a zoo, but they have yeah. all the different species that you can find here in Ecuador that it's you might not have been able to see in the wild, which is kind of cool. It's more like a rescue center, so these animals are maybe from people who are animal trafficking, mm -hmm. things like that. It's spread out over the hillside, they have big enclosures which they can range across and that means that in order to get to them there's loads of like hiking trails and yeah. things around you get a bit of hiking in as well so yeah because you know we love hiking yeah. right now plus as a bonus you can get a really beautiful view over Cuenca which is nice downside to these great big enclosures though is that you're not always guaranteed to see any animals it's almost like when we're in Costa Rica yeah. or in the Amazon you just walk in nature if you spot something you're lucky if not yeah. that's part of the fun I guess they're at the Andean bear enclosure now which is all this area in here as you can see it's pretty thick maybe there's other viewpoints <laughs> Sometimes can be a bit of a torture because <laughs> they're just so adorable and you want to stroke them, you want to pet them, but you cannot. But it's such a torture when they look so cute. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's so close to this puma. It's still sad there. Look at me now. Oh my god. <laughs> my heart is melting. I'm playing. Oh my god. It's lovely. Hey. Oh my god. Wow. These condors are huge. I've seen plenty of them flying around in the wild, but like when you really see them up close or see the image of them up close, that's like me lying down from there to there easily. No, that's like Meters. Okay, that's more than me lying down. <laughs> it's like the two of us lying down. Over three meter wingspan. It's nice that they kind of tell you what happened to the animals and how they ended up here as well. There are lots of other information about the animal in general, their sizes or where you can find them and everything. It's very interesting. We are entering the Cayman enclosure. I mean, okay, they have six. <laughs> are you that's, sure? That's the only way you can go. Is it feeding time? <laughs> Heard Cayman like to eat cats. There they are. Our hike around the biopark was filled with many more amazing animals oh. from enormous Galapagos tortoises. majestic lions and a crazy number of reptiles and amphibians. But our most memorable encounter was definitely with the jaguars. Oh. I think we're going to 
own for a section that's called like deforestation which is probably like representing what happened to the animals when people were just burning down the jungle We're just leaving the biopark now and overall really really awesome experience so unlike any sort of zoo type thing we've ever been to before it's all one way so you don't have to keep zigzagging to get to different enclosures and stuff like you would at a normal zoo it's really fun just to hike through the forest and all the way around you're getting these sort of like conservation messages and so it really is a good setup and a good mission that they've got going on here We also visited a Panama hat museum near the city centre. Despite the name, these iconic Tokia straw hats have deep ancestral roots in Ecuador and are made from a plant that is native to the country. The construction of the Panama Canal resulted in high demand for the straw hats and they gained international popularity, with many people referring to them as Panama hats because of where they were being used. Many famous people have been seen wearing the Panama hats and we both tried a few on for size. However, the price tag persuaded us to just admire them from a distance. So today for our last thing here in Cuenca, we have decided to treat ourselves. We've done a lot of difficult and hard treks over the last few months, so we thought it's about time we pampered ourselves and we've come down here to Piedra de Agua, which is a spa just outside of the city centre. Yeah, and it's supposed to be really good because you have multiple treatments. Apparently on Fridays and Mondays you get a deal, two for one deal. Oh. They have many different treatments available at Piedra de Agua, but we went through the outdoor spa circuit, which began with 10 minutes in the steam room. Then we were shown to the red and blue mud bath. The red mud bath comes first and acts as a natural exfoliant that helps remove toxins from the body. <laughs> The blue mud bath comes after and it's supposed to act as a skin moisturizer and anti-wrinkle agent. Then it was on to the underground contrast pools where as you might have guessed one pool is lovely and warm and the other is... <laughs> Sit down. Oh, God. <laughs> it's cold. oh, it's nice. That's so tingly. <laughs> yeah. It's like having pins and needles everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. It's like when you come back from winter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're now yeah. in the snow and you're mm -hmm. freezing and you're washing your hands with like hot water. Yeah. Lastly, we went to the box steam baths, which are quite literally a box that you have to sit in up to your neck whilst your body gets swamped with steam therapy. You definitely come out sweaty. You could also get two for one cocktail. Just on Mondays and Fridays again. Yeah. I think we got like the two most colorful. I think mine's like a chocolatey one. This has got for the cow. Looks really nice. Cheers. Sweet. Definitely taste the water. <laughs> it's nice though. We've got amaretto in, so it's very amaretto y. Oh, it's nice. And chocolatey. Oh, it sounds nice. Very sounds like a dessert. Yeah. Did you enjoy this bar? Yeah, it was a good experience, especially yeah. for two, a two for one deal. I think mm -hmm. it was definitely worth it. It was definitely it. worth it. Kind of the first spa we've ever done together, I think. <laughs> so it's pretty cool and a really nice way to like finish our time in Cuenca and a nice treat after like all of the hikes and everything we've done over the last yeah. few months. Catch you on the next video. Thanks.